learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am instructor CPA Ringo Frederick. And today I'm very excited because it is a first class and uh, today we are introducing a very interesting uh, unit that is a uh, public finance and taxation. Before we jump there, I remember one day there's a student of mine who asked me this question. Molimu, what's the difference between school and life? I know you always tend to say that uh, lecturers or teachers always have uh, answers at their fingertips. But this question, it really puzzled me. To the extent that I decided to go and uh, do my research. And in the process of doing my research, I came across this quote. The difference between life and school. In school, you are taught a lesson and then given a test. But in life, you are given a test that teaches you a lesson. So having this concept and that quote really changed the perception of how we normally tend to teach at M. Rasa. Personally, myself. And the same quote, I want you guys to approach this unit of public finance and taxation. Let us approach it as a test that will teach us a lesson, not doing a lesson to do a test. So we approach it with an open mind. We approach it with a practical mind. And if you are able to do that, it will be very, very easy for us to handle taxation. And you'll find that it will be very, very interesting as we work out this unit of public finance and taxation. So I'll give you an overview of what will be expected to cover in tax. And this overview, it will be a guide. It will be a map on how we are going to accomplish all the topics that we will be expected to cover. So one thing that I want us to have it at the back of our mind as you are commencing this class is that we are approaching public finance and taxation as a test that will teach us what? Life, or rather that will teach us a lesson. So once you do that, you'll find that things will be very, very easy on our side. So looking at our public finance and taxation, first of all, we are going to agree that I'll be having two segments. I'm having a segment of public finance and I'm having a segment of taxation. In total, we'll be talking of 13 topics, which in this case, starting with topic number one, what will we be expected to cover in topic number one? What will we be expected to cover in topic number one? Topic number one, we will be expected to cover the following. That is introduction. We will be expected to cover introduction uh, to public financial management, introduction to uh, public financial, introduction to public financial management, legal framework management, a uh, legal framework, legal framework, legal framework legal framework. So basically, uh, in this chapter, it would be us being introduced to the whole idea of what public finance entails. So you'll be expected to cover the nature and scope of public finance as it is. To understand any time you are talking of public finance, basically, what does it entail? And the good thing is that my good students will find that these are very practical. I know all of us, we normally tend to talk of uh, the budget, we normally tend to talk of how the government raises its revenue, we normally tend to talk of how the government will spend its revenue. So all these are within the scope of uh, introduction to public financial uh, legal framework. Also, it will be upon us to understand some of the objectives of the Public Financial Management Act and financial regulations. So you'll find that it is purely practical. In this case, even if you haven't kind of studied it at this point, it is expected that you should be having this knowledge because it is very, very uh, practical. Then talk of uh, topic number two, 
uh, in relation to uh, topic number one, because they do relate, we'll be talking of relationship between national uh, relationship, a uh, relationship uh, between relationship between uh, national and county government, national uh, and county governments and uh, county uh, government and county government and county government on budget and economic matters on budget on budget and uh, economic matters on budget and economic on budget and economic matters so you'll find that uh, uh, in uh, topic number two basically at this point you do understand that our system of uh, government basically is uh, we having uh, the national government and uh, the county uh, county governments. So as at the end of the day, they work as a one system because they do interrelate in so many in so many cases. So our task as uh, public finance uh, and taxation students, it will be upon us to understand whenever you're talking of the county government and whenever you're talking of the national government in relation to budget, in relation to economic uh, matters, in that case, we'll find that uh, how do they relate. At this point, uh, I know like uh, we're having uh, a budget which was uh, read just the other time. I know majority of us, if I may ask this question, to give me the uh, value, or rather to give me the figure in relation to the proposed budget, what is the total budget proposed that was said the other time? How much are we uh, estimated, or rather how much, uh, the, how much is the government estimating to spend period 2022-2023? <coughs> Excuse, I'm asking that question you as a student of public finance and taxation. Do you have that knowledge, if I may ask? you'll find that that will be very, very key. So that at this point, and that's why I'm saying that you should approach it with an open mind. Many illustrations that we'll be working out in our classes, we'll be looking at it on a practical perspective, which will really, really assist us. So in topic number two, basically, it will be upon us to understand this relationship that do exist between our county and national our government. Then topic number three, also a very interesting uh, topic. At this point, we'd be expected to cover oversight. Talk about the oversight. Talk about the oversight function in public. Oversight function. Oversight, pa uh, oversight function in public finance management. In uh, public finance management. In public finance management. Oversight function in public finance management. You'll find that uh, in oversight function, or rather the oversight function in uh, public finance management, at this point, I know in this country we do have a cancer. A cancer that is uh, really killing a lot of businesses. A cancer that is really derailing infrastructural and other developments. A cancer that is really also affecting our education system. And this cancer is a cancer of corruption. That is, without saying, that is a fact that it is really happening in this country of ours. But I know we can go through a period of uh, chemotherapy, which as at the end of the day, we might be able to kill this cancer. Because I believe as much as is in a certain stage, it hasn't reached stage four. We can still kind of revive our glory. And I know there are so many things that you can do to change and kill this cancer. So that's why you'll find that in, all, in our country, our country, we will be expected to have, or rather, this oversight function in public finance management, it is set there. So that at any given point in time, whenever we say that government is spending, I should be having a certain department, if it is either within treasury, or maybe whichever that is going to be set, to make sure that 
any aspect of expenditure. We have a justification of any expenditure that we'll be having, as well as uh, maybe kind of uh, accounting for each and every fund that the government is distributing. So I know we are in a long, long, long way for us to make sure that this department really works effectively. And that's why it will be very important that students, us as uh, maybe you as students of uh, public finance and taxation, as we'll be studying this, we should be studying with a, a problem solving mind that in this case, if I can have a chance, I can say or rather I can change one or two things. And that is where the medicine of cancer is going to start from. Let us start by first understanding the whole concept. Let us start by understanding the whole duties and functions what, of what uh, this uh, department needs to do. And by doing that, we'll find that it will give us that zeal. It will give us that motivation because we're having the knowledge which you can also argue our points right. So you'll find that uh, our oversight uh, function in public finance management is also very key and very, very interesting. So after that case, we'll also be looking at uh, topic number four. Topic number four. In this case, we'll be expected to cover uh, procurement in public entities. Talk about procurement. Uh, procurement in uh, public entities. Procurement in public entities. Whenever we're talking of procurement in public entities, basically, I know one thing that will come on the back of our mind is aspect to do with tenders, which is very correct, right? So at this point, anytime you're looking at uh, the procurement in public entities, you'll find that you'll be expected to understand the process of announcing this tender, the process of bidding, the bidding process up to the point whereby the same is going to be awarded to the person who is going to win the tender. Whereby, of course, these are always forms of contracts which can be for one year or more than one year. Any time you are working with government, more so in every talking of supply, there must always be that tender that has always been issued, and the winner is a person who is going to be given that uh, uh, that contract is going to be, or that tender is going to be awarded to this person. In the same case, we'll find that you normally tend to talk of various systems like IFMIS. Talk about uh, talk about uh, aspect of uh, uh, other systems within the uh, public sector, which has been said to make sure that the tendering process is very, done very correctly. The aspect of the procurement process is done very correctly. Also, not only tender, you can also look at it in a manner whereby, for example, like at this point, maybe at this point, I'm having government officials. Yes. They want to go and uh, have uh, uh, maybe uh, get together somewhere, or maybe they want to go to a seminar somewhere. Of course, they are going to kind of uh, maybe, uh, of course, uh, reserve. Uh, they, are, they are going to make reservation on various hotels. These hotels must be paid. So before we pay a certain hotel, in that case, there will be a process. This is also part of procurement. Procurement is not only a matter of tendering only, but we'll also be looking at any transaction whether tender or not, that relates to pub, that relates to government and other suppliers or whoever that uh, the business will be conducted with. In that case, the aspect of us understanding procurement in uh, sector uh, or rather procurement in public entities is very, very, is very, very important for us. And you'll find that it will give us a basis and a very good knowledge and understanding for us to always work it out whereby we'll be looking at the procurement guidelines as in uh, as stipulated probably in the uh, aspect of our acts we'll also be looking at uh, the procurement process by the national uh, county government and other public entities also uh, you can find that uh, topic number four is also a very interesting it's a very very interesting uh, topic as much as it's theoretical but it's also it's very interesting and very practical so once we are able to uh, look at it in the angle of practicability, you'll find that things will be very, very easy and very sweet on our side. Mentioning that, that should take us to topic number five, 
which uh, topic number five basically would be expected to understand uh, the concept of a public-private partnership. So topic number five, in this case, would be expected to understand uh, the aspect of a public-private uh, uh, partnership arrangement, public-private partnership, public-private partnership, uh, of course, uh, arrangements, public-private partnership arrangements. I normally term this as triple P, triple P's, right? Public-private partnership arrangement. This is a very interesting uh, area. This is a very, very interesting area, uh, public-private partnership arrangement, uh, triple P. At this point, I want you to take yourself uh, in a practical uh, area, arena. Like, for example, in the environment of Kenya, right? There's some certain projects whereby you'll find that uh, the government of Kenya will come into partnership with other private sectors to deliver on certain projects. As of the end of the day, these projects will benefit the citizens. A good example is uh, SGR, whereby as of the end of the day, you'll find that it is the government of Kenya, as much as uh, they normally tend to say that prices are inflated, but as of the end of the day, you'll find that it was an agreement or rather it was a partnership between government of Kenya and other private entities to deliver on this project, which is at the end of the day, who is benefiting? Of course, it is the citizens who are benefiting on these projects. Another example uh, which was initiated uh, with our beloved uh, president, former president, may his soul rest in eternal peace, uh, Mwai Kibaki the one of his legacy, Pika Superhighway here in Nairobi, right? So you'll find that uh, this project basically was a partnership between government and private sectors to deliver on these projects, which as at the end of the day, these projects are utilized by who? Are utilized by the citizens. It is the citizens who are enjoying this uh, project. Other case is uh, Express Highway, Express Highway. In this case, we'll find that as at the end of the day, it is a project uh, which was initiated by the partnership between the government of Kenya and private uh, entities. So that as at the end of the day, they should clear these infrastructural projects, which as at the end of the day, it is the citizens who are going to enjoy the fruits of these projects, right? So all these are forms of public-private partnership. So the whole concept behind public-private partnership we just be looking at the arrangements or rather the partnership between the government of Kenya or rather government and private entities to deliver on projects which will be of the benefit to the citizens. And that is what will be uh, expected to cover under public-private partnership arrangements. After looking at topic number five, in that case I should take us straight to topic number six. And in topic number six, my good students, what will we be expected to cover? Topic number six, we'll be expected to cover public debt management. 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 I know you're wondering why are you mixing uh, capital letters and small letters in your sentence, right? So in this case, uh, to stress it up, we're talking of public debt management. So at this point, you'll find that uh, any time you're handling a public debt management, of course, at this point, there are some scenarios or other projects or services which you cannot deliver with the whole amount that we've collected within our jurisdiction. So in such a case, in such events, we'll always tend to be required to do or to borrow. And in borrowing these funds, we must utilize them in a manner that is very efficient, in a manner that we can say that actually this fund was used in this project and in this project. So by doing that, we must have persons who are going to be answerable in the event that maybe these resources have been misused. And that's why you're talking of public, ma uh, public debt management. How are we going to manage the debt that we've collected? And that's why we say that, again, these are areas where we're having a lot of cancer. And this cancer, I believe, one day that growth is going to be eliminated completely. The growth, the cancer of corruption, right? So uh, the whole idea behind public debt management, it will be upon us to understand 
how we will be expected to do what how we will be expected to kind of manage the data that we've collected and a very common uh, concept not only concept but term that i know majority of us we've all heard of that term yes it's, it is part of of course uh, the days that you're talking about if i may ask this question this term eurobond yeah eurobond if this student of hospitality i'm not saying that hospitality students are not supposed to run we don't know this item at times right but you as a student of public financial management you as a student of finance you expect to understand this term eurobond right suppose this student of uh, hospitality he has approached you or she has approached you and uh <coughs> excuse he or she wants her help on the definition of eurobond if i may ask that question what can you say eurobond is you student who is doing finance what's a eurobond what can you say a eurobond is what can you say a eurobond is yeah is it a bond from europe yeah is it a bond from europe it's not a bond from europe so this is the second assignment that i want you guys to go and give me that uh that uh, answer will you need next so the first assignment was give me the estimated budget of kenya proposed budget 2022-2023 and the other assignment here is euro bond yeah i know majority of you because it was issued uh, in uh, euro you'll say that probably or rather it was uh, issued outside the country actually i'm giving you an answer you say that now that is uh, what you're talking of europe what you're talking of euro bond because it was issued in europe no it's not the case right so at this point this would bring us to the end of our first segment which everything here from topic one to topic number six basically all these are theory but very interesting and very practical as much as they are theory they are very very interesting and very very practical so this is our first segment of public finance as i've said in this case we expect to cover two segments that is public finance and the other area is what taxation so you'll find that this is our first segment public finance public finance which i'm having from topic number one to topic number six after doing our first segment starting from topic number seven that will be our second segment topic number seven in this case now we are talking of introduction to taxation introduction to taxation introduction to taxation looking at introduction to taxation my goodness now at this point we we'll now be introduced to the concept of taxation we should be expected to understand the history of taxation we should be expected to understand the types of taxation the principle of an optimal tax system we should also be able to understand classification of tax systems talk about aspect of a tax evasion and tax avoidance is actually is all concept to do with matters of taxation for us to be for us to have that clear foundation on matters of taxation so as i've said we'll be expected to cover a lot of items there including history types of taxation principles of optimal tax uh, tax system talk about the aspect of our classification of tax system and all other concepts that is what we'll be expected to cover in uh, topic number seven which is introduction to taxation topic number eight my good students which is uh, one of the longest topic and uh, very important uh, topics this is a uh, topic number eight topic number eight at this point you'll be expected to understand taxation of income of persons taxation of income of persons taxation of income of persons and i'm going to have it as a with a series because this is a one of actually this is a, the longest topic that we'll be having and one of the most important topic that at any given point we must have at the back of our mind not only for the purpose of doing exams but also for the purpose of applying these concepts practically as i've said that is the longest topic in this unit and one of the most important topics for the purpose of exams taxation of income of persons will cover 40 to 50 percent of whatever that is going to be tested taxation of income of persons is going to cover 40 to 50 percent of whatever that is going to be tested in your in your exams 
So it is very critical that we should understand and pay a very clear attention on topic number eight. We'll be expected to know how are we supposed to tax individuals. Like maybe we are talking of pay, we are talking of uh, maybe aspect of uh, determining uh, the taxation of these persons who are employed. We are talking of uh, determining the taxation of partnership business. We are talking about determination of uh, taxation of uh, limited companies. We are talking about those who are supposed to be taxed and those who are not supposed to be taxed. So you'll find that uh, intro, uh, taxation of income of persons is quite wide and uh, the longest topic that we'll be having and also very important topic that we'll be expected to cover. So that is topic number eight, taxation of income of persons. Going through topic number nine, what we should be expected to understand here, we are talking of uh, topic number nine. Also, this one, I'm going to have it with an asterisk. This is investment allowances or deductions. Investment allowances slash deductions. This is also one of the most important topics that, again, you must be able to grasp and understand very well. This is one of the foundation of uh, tax, what you must be able to know and understand. So looking at investment allowances, uh, also known as uh, capital allowances, is also very key. Not only for the purpose of exams, but also for the purpose of us applying it outside here. Because at any given point, suppose you get a chance of uh, maybe uh, uh, working uh, at a senior level of uh, management, you'll always be expected to prepare management reports. Of course, is always we, tend all, we normally tend always to work this as a team. In regard to aspect of uh, the management uh, accounts, at this point you'll find that you'll be expected to prepare draft accounts, which at the end of the day, it can be used by the auditors, right? To audit whatever that you guys have done in your company. So therefore, at this point, it will be very key because also on that, we'll be expected to have a component of uh, aspect of uh, uh, the WTA schedule and other investment deduction schedules, which you must also demonstrate and explain it very well in your, in your books. So topic number nine is also very, very important that we should be able to grasp and understand the whole concept correctly. Topic number 10, my good students here. It is upon us to understand the administration of income tax and tax procedures. This is uh, administration, administration of uh, income tax, administration of uh, income tax and uh, tax procedures, administration of income tax and what? And uh, tax procedures and tax procedures. So you'll also find that uh, at this point, uh, basically, it is upon us to understand some of the concepts which will also be looking at it partly practically registration and deregistration of taxpayers how are you supposed to register as taxpayers and how, how can we deregister we'll be talking of uh, aspect to do the assessment and returns we'll be talking of uh, aspect to do the uh, aspect to do the administration of penalties and offenses so all this will be expected to be covered in uh, topic number 10. going to topic number 11 going to topic number 11 will be expected to understand administration of VAT. Administration, talk about administration of value added tax. Administration of value added tax. I know VAT is not a new term to us, even if it's the first time that you're doing tax. I know all of us, we are victims of VAT. A time there's a rise in fuel, of course, people will always, or rather, anytime there's a rise in, uh, anytime there's a rise in uh, VAT, people will always expect that everything, of course, will tend to, to rise. Because you'll find that uh, it is a form of uh, indirect tax, which we'll be looking at the whole concept of indirect tax, which is uh, chargeable on the value of goods within the certain jurisdiction. So it is uh, very important that we do understand this concept. So also, this point, uh, this topic, I'm going to mark it with an asterisk. Any topic that I'm marking it with an asterisk, that is to indicate that is a very important uh, topic that if at all you are to pass tax, you must be having a very good knowledge on the same. That is uh, topic number 11. Looking at uh, topic number 12, uh, which is also very important, uh, 
just a minute here. We're talking of uh, basically custom and custom taxes and excise taxes. We're talking of custom taxes and excise taxes. Uh, just a moment here before Molimu proceed. So you'll find that uh, basically tax is always very interesting, by the way. If you just approach it with a mind that uh, you really want to learn, you really want to learn, not to study, you want to learn. If you approach it with a mind that you want to learn, you'll find tax to be a very, very interesting, a very, very interesting unit. I'm saying that you approach it with a mind that you want to learn, not like you want to study. We are talking of learning. Because recall there's a difference between studying and learning, right? There's a difference between uh, studying and learning. So if you approach it with that mind, you'll find that things will be very, very easy on our side. So we are talking of our topic number 12 here. Which you are seeing that I'm talking of custom taxes. Custom taxes. Custom taxes. Custom taxes and excise. And excise taxes, right? So basically, these are what we'll be expected to cover: the custom taxes and uh, excise and excise taxes. So it's also very key that you understand that. And finally, of course, uh, topic number thirteen will be expected to cover the aspect to do with miscellaneous fees and levies, miscellaneous fees and levies. Talk about uh, miscellaneous fees. Talk about miscellaneous, miscellaneous uh, fees. Miscellaneous fees and levies. Miscellaneous fees and levies. Uh, these are uh, other levies that uh, we'll be covering. Uh, that is, uh, of course, talk about uh, maybe uh, various studies that we'll be talking about and other levies, actually, that we'll be covering here. So you'll find that uh, this is uh, what we'll be expected to understand when it comes to tax. As Molimo had mentioned, I'm having two segments. The segment of public finance and the segment of taxation, and the segment of taxation. So, of course, uh, we will be expected to cover the whole of this concept, given the structure, like you're expected to cover within how long? Only like three months. But I really advocate that we should always try to have it, even if it's to start studying in advance, we start studying in advance, so that we have adequate time of doing all this. But uh, at this point, the beauty with this recorded version is that you can study them at any given point in time. So as much as you're talking of three months, we'll also be looking at, you can study, you can use uh, these tutorials at any given point. Go six months because the focus is for you guys to grasp the concept, for you guys to have the knowledge. Remember the code that we've started, uh, the code that we've started with in this session of ours. In this case, let us approach this as a test that will teach us a lesson, not a lesson that will prepare us to go and do a test, right? So once you have that, basically what Molimu is saying that we should approach it with, with an open mind. And by doing so, things will be very, very interesting. So to this point, guys, I want you to meet me in our next session where we are going to introduce our first topic. Thank you so much, guys, and see you in our next class, and see you in our next class, and see you in our next class. Thank you.